Good evening and welcome to part two of the new computer build. Now, I was bragging last night about how, I mean the last time I recorded, about how there was only four parts. Um, yes, uh, the CPU, which also includes a cooler, storage, the motherboard, and the case, which also includes a power supply. So, uh, you know, counting one, two, three, four, right? And there's one <laughs> very important thing I forgot. So that brings it brings it to a total of five things you have to have. And you'll never guess what's in here. So this is from Newegg, and the, the other parts were from were from Vugo. So that's just how the pricing of everything's worked out. Memory. Yes, very, very, very important, and just uh, so if I'd actually tried to, uh, I'd actually tried to get this going uh, the other night, I wouldn't have gotten very far. And if you are looking for a toolless case, look elsewhere, because this uh, this one's definitely going to require a screwdriver. My intent is to get the. Get the CPU onto the motherboard. We'll have to have the memory in there too. And, uh, which I mean, I guess that's essentially putting everything together. I'm going to try to see if I can sneakily see if it'll post without, uh, without attaching the cooler. Because I don't, you know, for, for reasons. We just want, I just want to make sure the processor works before putting it together with the cooler because you only want to do that once. Okay, so we open it up, and the top and one of the sides comes off with uh, just two screws on the back. And got a fan there. Uh, we got some drive base here. Got our power cord. Got some cable ties, I think. And some screws and other things. And I believe these are front panel connectors. And then these are the things that'll go from the power supply onto the board. And it's a USB 3 header and a USB 2 header. Okay, so I've got the power supply plugged in so I can touch it once in a while to sort of but to discharge, discharge myself of any potential static. As long as that's grounded, I touch it, I'm grounded. I don't have to worry about static. Uh, and I'm going to see if this board is ready to go on here. It looks like I've got, got four um, places to screw it in. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm going to use the tried and true motherboard box as test bench technique before I um before I act and get it actually going before I put the board in the case but it looks like I'll sh I should just be able to slide it down and these four posts should line up with these little uh there's one back there and one there all those holes okay I've got my first sign of concern here AMD Ryzen 3000 series, la di da di da, is compatible with all 500 series motherboards out of a box. This is a 350. And is compatible with 400 series and A320 motherboards. This is an A350. AB350. When a compatible BIOS update has been installed, motherboard packaging fight featuring either of the graphics are supported compatible without a BIOS update. I do not. I have read Ryzen 2000 desktop ready, and no, I do not have this. I do not have this uh, blurb either. Second gen Ryzen with Radeon graphics compatible. But see, I was kind of hoping though that that this because it says 2000 series and second gen Ryzen. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this will that this will still work. So let's. Uh, Let's keep going. So there's the CPU and there's a little case sticker. Okay, they don't make it super clear on this one 
which the golden corner is, but you can tell by looking at the looking at the pin grid here, uh, because that's like that's a that's a corner, that's a corner, that's a corner, like a like a flat corner, and then this corner here, it's like you see how it's indented. It's so these are diagonal, 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 and this is like a it's like a little a little L there or something, or whatever you want to call it. And then of course, so on the CPU, the CPU has a distinct triangle there. And if we flip it over, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see that the same, the same holds true on the CPU itself. There's that little, so that triangle goes to go to that corner. Okay, so the arm went up, the CPU went in, now the arm goes down. We don't want it to slide right out, right out of the way. All right, easy peasy. And uh, so. should be secure. I don't want to. I don't want to try to move the mother move it around by the but yeah feel feels uh feels like it's in there i don't want to put too much force on it though all right uh so next up will be memory and then the power connectors and i'll get my hdmi from over there and we'll do uh We'll see if it'll get to post. Wow, these uh, these dims are very low profile, which and and I approve. And uh, there's no like um, RGB foo fra on them either, which for this case is fine because there's no windows in it. I mean, you know, the look through windows kind. I will actually have windows on this machine. Okay, now I got the memory on. And then to do that, you like open the little tabs on the far end. They're just on one side, and they needed they needed a pretty good push to to click in on both sides. So I actually ended up doing it on the doing it on the floor. Um, maybe I should have maybe I should have done it on the box. I just uh, I just didn't didn't like the way things were flexing. Uh, so here we go for pow for the power supply stuff. There's a good old Molex connector. I don't know what this is for. And then we have SATA power. So it looks like that that whole thing is just for I.O. Uh, these two we need. These uh, provide juice for the CPU. So they're going to go here. And then this long one is going to go gonna go here okay and something I don't like about this power supply is it doesn't have a switch on it so I can't <laughs> I can't have it off so I went and I went and you know when I when I hooked this in I saw I saw something light up <laughs> somewhere it's not the way I like doing it but uh, and then these um, these CPU things here um, they uh, they sort of they slide together so you put you have you have them like this and then this piece slides next to this one okay and just popping into the motherboard box and get a shield wi-fi antenna sata cables drivers if you have an optical drive to read them and the manual and i'm going to look in the manual because i want to know what pins do i short to start this thing <laughs> We got the um, we got the monitor on input switching off, so it should it should show if anything if anything posts. And I've got a little um, got a little keyboard here plugged into that. So let's find out. Okay, research is complete. We're looking at. These two power switch. It's these two red ones. So let's 
uh, the flathead on. Oh, I should be able to short these two pins and have it come to life. Ooh, I'm kind of scared. Whew. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this with two hands. It's alive. I'm getting, getting signs of life. Or. Like the power supply is doing something. But. Nothing else is happening. Uh, uh, that's on, yeah. Uh, that's connected. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I don't think it's good, gonna go. So this is the box my board came in, and on here it says, you know, they're Ryzen Desktop 2000 ready. They're, uh, they're putting it on their website that it's 3000 ready. So, if we just go, uh, jump over here to the CPU support list, or wait over here, okay. Uh, so the 2400G that I have in my other system requires F10 BIOS update. It would probably work. Uh, but I don't want to have to take apart my old computer. Uh, and then the 3400G uh, requires this F40 BIOS update. And so I imagine whatever I have, I don't have the F40. So... The thing to do is go down to the unable to boot new or a desktop system with AMD Ryzen, la di da. Scroll down here, short term processor loan boot kit is what I'm going to need. And I mean, I could, uh, they also say like, you know, you can exchange the motherboard with your motherboard manufacturer but I think I think it's easy I think it's easier to do a CPU swap so I'll fill this in and see how it goes okay so there have been some developments so I I showed you this thing about uh, you know oh I can't boot my desktop system and there's these workarounds um, USB fl BIOS flashback that would be useful but my motherboard doesn't support it I, I was looking for motherboards that supported this while I was shopping, but I couldn't find a small factor motherboard at a reasonable price. So, we're going the boot kit route. Um, so, you fit, you know, it tells you, okay, you fill out the warranty claim page, you fill in your contact information, and you say boot kit required. So, do all that. Put in uh, part number, serial number, I just made that up. Boot kit required. I send that off. You get a confirmation like right away that your claim is being processed. The following night, so this was so this was like Saturday. I, Saturday night I sent this. Sunday night, I hear back from them. Oh, thank you for your request to loan a boot kit from AMD. I would like to verify that you have tried to contact your motherboard manufacturer or their local authorized service provider. That's a bit of a joke in Prince Rupert, BC. And they have established that your motherboard requires a BIOS update and we're not able to help you perform that update. Please provide a summary or a copy of your communication with the motherboard manufacturer. <clears throat> and then it mentions, oh, USB BIOS flashback, which you know you should be doing if, it, um, if your board supports it. And they require a picture of your Ryzen processor that shows the model and serial plus your invoice. And can you also send a picture of your motherboard? And yeah, once we have this, we'll we'll uh, establish your legibility for a bootkit loan. All right. So 
So I so here's what I sent to them. This is what I wrote. Good day. Thank you for your prompt response to my support request. I have received information from from the motherboard manufacturer Gigabyte. Okay, so this is my way of like sort of fibbing. I didn't actually communicate with Gigabyte. I've received information from Gigabyte. They're, you know, by which I mean I went to their website. So I have received information from the motherboard manufacturer Gigabyte that indicates that I require a BIOS update, and my particular model does not support USB BIOS flashback. Updating the BIOS must be done with a compatible CPU installed either from the BIOS configuration menu or with a Windows utility to do the same. The F40 BIOS, the earliest BIOS that will run on a 3400G, was released June 14th, 2019, but my motherboard was manufactured during the 17th week of 2019, late April. And I'm in, I'm inferring that from the serial number. I don't, I don't know that 100% for sure, but it's a pretty safe bet. Furthermore, I live in a remote location and have no physical access to either the board manufacturer or the retailer. I have attached photos of the CPU, motherboard, and a copy of my invoice. Please let me know if anything further is required. So here's what I sent them. Uh, so I sent them this screenshot from the Gigabyte website, and I highlighted, oh, you know, my 3400G, I need the F40 BIOS. I took a photo of the page of the manual that there's there's no mention of USB BIOS flashback, which I would use if I could. So you've only got the you've got the Q flash from within BIOS, but you, you need a working CPU to get there, or you've got this other Windows utility, you know, assuming you've got Windows installed on the machine, but you know, also definitely need a working CPU for that. And here's the picture I took on the motherboard. And I took another picture closer into the CPU to actually show the CPU serial number. And I also, I also took a picture of the retail box too with the serial number, just in case they may, may have had trouble reading the serial number off the CPU there, but, but they could still see that it matches. And yeah, so here this F40 BIOS is what I need. And it came out in June, 2019 and this, uh, Week 17 corresponds to like late April 2019. So, and you can see here, even on the box, it just says desktop 2000 ready, not 3000 ready. And yeah, I took a picture of the motherboard serial details. So, yeah, don't be don't be a bad boy and uh, do an RMA with Gigabyte based on my serial number. Okay, I'm I'm trusting you guys. All right, so that's what I that's what I sent. The, oh yeah, and I also needed to send them a pdf of my um i i got the, i i reopened the email with my order confirmation from vugo made it into a pdf and also attached that so this was sunday night that they got back to me and then i immediately got back to them again and now it's monday night and look at this your service request, your boat boot kit loan request has been authorized and will be shipping to you shortly. So this is excellent news. So, and they, you know, they get in instructions on flashing the BIOS and uh, returning the boot kit to AMD. Now, one interesting thing that has changed, uh, it used to be that they let you keep the heat sink. Now it wasn't going to be a particular, it wasn't a particularly useful uh, heat sink and fan. Uh, I'll, I'll link the Gamers Nexus video on this, but thing, things have changed that, um, that they also want the heatsink back now. So if you, yeah, cause here it is, please securely package the bootkit CPU and the heatsink fan in the box and, and send out all that back. So, and that's fine. You know, like you know, if they, if they want to reuse their cooler for more stuff, that's, that's a good idea. So yeah, that's what's happened there. So now I'm just eagerly awaiting my boot kiss.